God our Father, we thank you and praise you for this morning, for the privilege of being together with the family of your church. As we gather to hear your voice, O Lord, we know you are a loving Father, that you care for us and you speak to us through your love to bring us closer to you. Come, Holy Spirit, Lord and Teacher, teach us, open our hearts and minds to see and to hear what you speak into our lives. And Lord, give us the grace and the strength to respond the way you desire us to respond, in repentance, in obedience to your voice. We submit and surrender all these things and all our prayers in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Very good morning to each and every one of you. Good morning. Today we continue, or rather begin, a new theme or a new passage that we will be looking at with the title, New Wine and New Wineskins. New Wine and New Wineskins. But before we go further, let me begin with a small illustration. Let me say that I am not doing any marketing today, but uh, are you familiar with Tupperware products? We are used to using this term for anything that is plastic uh, containers in nature, but it began in the 1940s uh, by this particular man, Earl Silas Tupper. So Tupperware is wet, what his name is actually, Tupperware. He made this product and it's something that is famous even today. A lot of people use it. We have seen it in, even in our churches, the water bottles. So this is a type of a very famous form of container that is used. But during the time of Jesus, one of the most familiar form of containers, obviously they didn't have Tupperware yet. But uh, one of the form, usual form of containers was wine skins made out of animal skin. So this is what was used quite commonly, familiarly during the time of Jesus. So it correlates well if we look at the parable of Jesus in Luke chapter 5 verses 33 to 39. But for our reading, I will read from 36 to 39 alone. And he was also telling them a parable. So this parable you also found in Matthew 9, 14 to 17 and Mark chapter 2, verse 21 to 22. And he was also telling them a parable. No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. Otherwise, he will both tear the new and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins and it will be spilled out and the skins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into fresh wine skins. And no one, after drinking old wine, Wishes for new, for he says, the old is good enough. The context of this is in the context of the disciples of John the Baptist, and I believe the Pharisees together, coming to question Jesus. And that was not very unfamiliar. Different groups of people, whether genuinely or to test him, came to question Jesus. But in this context, there was a question about fasting. The question is not about how to fast, how long to fast, what is the manner of fasting. It's a question of comparison. It's a question is, they ask, we are fasting, why are you not fasting? Sounds familiar, right? When a particular group of people fast, they expect the other to fast. And if you don't follow the rules and regulation, you are against the law. 
you're not following the rules you are offending the other group of people so it it is something that we also observe in scripture when the disciples of john the baptist and as i said believe the pharisees disciples also probably tagged along and they are asking jesus this question so in response to these questions is what jesus speaks speaks about the bridegroom being around so the wedding guests don't have to fast yet but then he speaks about the parable of the cloth the unshrunk cloth that you don't patch the old with the new but then he goes on to speak the other parable that is what we will particularly focus and look at and luke chapter 5 verse 37 says no one puts new wine into old wine skins so old wine skins otherwise the new wine will burst the skins and it will be spilled out and the skins will be ruined in the words of dana smith she says we don't determine the move of god we are simply the vessel not the wine so when we look at the wine skins it reminds us of the vessel that carries the wine and we compare or relate ourselves as the wine skins as we will see in a short moment how jesus connects that all wine skins before they became old they were new they were fresh they were made out of goat skins or animal skins that were tanned partially and they were used to contain liquid and particularly in this context a wine skin it contains wine as it were but as it began new it was fresh it was more elastic as it is but as it takes time as it grows as it becomes older and older and older as it use as it is used multiple times it becomes old in that sense that it it is not comfortable to use it for a longer period especially if you want to pour in new wine into it so that's when jesus he speaks to the religious leaders or those who suppose they were very religious that they were very uh, Jude- uh, people who follow judaistic belief ascetic but then he speaks to them and says you can't put new wine into old bottles or old wine skins old containers it doesn't match it doesn't match at all what does he mean when he says this remember the context of the question they are very religious they are people who pray they are people who fast they they practice so called religious faith as it were but then they come and say to the disciples of Jesus and Jesus himself how come we are fasting and you're not fasting they have this sense of we are superior they have this sense of we are more experienced they have this sense that we are doing it how come you are not doing it or we have done it for many years how come you are not doing it they are imposing their practices and their belief on to the other in that sense but they are basing that on what they do what they practice what they have done all this while and here they come to teach jesus the son of god what it is to mean to live a religious life a god fearing life as it were so when jesus speaks this and he in a sense identifies these people who come and make this judgment calls as old wine skins i'm bringing something new but you are not able to accept and receive this because you are old wine skins you're not able to receive you're not able to accept you are still with the old way of doing things old mindset old practices of lifestyle and we think that's the way it should be so it's like this image 
a guy coming and trying to put a push. Move forward, but it's never going to move. It's already set. It's hard. It's not a live one, obviously, if you can see it with your glasses on. It's trying to push, change, but no, I don't want to change. I will remain as it is. It's very Anglican, right? As it was in the beginning, is now and forever shall be. That refers to God's eternity. He is eternal. But somehow we, we become very eternally set in our ways, in our practices, in our way of thinking, in our way of doing church, family, everything. If we don't change, there is an English word that correlates quite well with that. It's called stubborn. Hosea chapter 4, verse 16. This is God making a judgment call and saying to his people, says, since Israel is stubborn. Israel is so stubborn, like a stubborn heifer. Can the Lord now pasture them like a lamb in a large field? Old wineskins are so stubborn, they cannot be changed. They are set in their ways. So when God looks at the nation of Israel, and if you know the context of Hosea, how stubborn they were, how rebellious they were, how they were turning back again to sin and again to sin and again to sin, even when the Lord lovingly calls them, calls them, calls them. Today we hear much about the preaching about the love of God. As much as that is true, as much as God is loving, God is love. He loves us. And out of His love, He gave His one and only Son to love, show His love and to prove His love and to redeem us by His love. But now, having been redeemed, having experienced His love, where do we move forward? How do we go forward? In Psalm 81, verses 11 and 12, But my people will not listen to me. Israel would not Submit to me. And verse 12 he says, So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own devices. So we can be stubborn. We can be set in our own ways of doing things. And what would God do? How did God respond when Israel was stubborn? He says, I gave them over to their stubborn hearts. I gave them to be the way they wanted to be. Adamant. He said, this is the way we want to live. We want to make the golden calf, we will make it. We want to practice the way we want to do it, we will practice it. Why should we listen to God? So they started making gods in the image that they desired. And the Bible says, God gave them over, surrendered them over to their stubborn hearts. You remember the story of how God delivered his people out of Egypt, and particularly the incident of how Moses engages with Pharaoh. But God says, I will harden his heart. Because he was a stubborn man by himself. Because his Pharaoh... For, for the Egyptians, Pharaoh does not only mean a king, he's a god, the god for his people. So they obey whatever he says. So for God to come down and to change his heart, change his mind, change his decision and to let the people in slavery go was a difficult decision. So God says, I will give him over to his stubborn heart. So we can choose to remain and God will say, I will give them over. You want to remain as you are, I will let you be as you are. But we can choose conformity or conversion. To remain as we are is an option. It's a choice that we can make. Or to say, God, it's tough, it's difficult, I am quite set in my ways, but nevertheless, I offer myself to you and say, Lord, change me. Change me 
and transform me. Transform me the way that you desired me to be. As I said during the New Year service, this is a scripture that the Lord impressed upon my heart. When we were praying and asking, Lord, what is it? What's, what's there in store? And the Lord says, I want to pour in new wine, but I need new wineskins. I want to give the new, but are my people ready to receive the new? Or are we still stuck in our old ways of doing things? So much so that we are not ready, prepared to accept the new that the Lord wants to give. What is this new? The new blessings, the new providences, the new guidance, the new way, new steps. There's so many new things that the Lord wants to do. But then we are so stuck in our ways, stubborn in our ways, adamant in our ways, fixed in our ways, that not, we're not willing to change. So in Acts chapter 7, when Stephen preaches, he says, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears. So when we are stubborn, remember, we're not only being stubborn, but we are, Scripture says, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. We can remain stubborn. We can remain as we are. We be the old wine skin, vintage, treasured. But if you are not willing to listen to the voice of the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God who speaks, who speaks into our lives, says to us, this needs to change. The way we speak needs to change. The way we think needs to change. The wind blows the way it desires. And we are to follow along with the wind. The wind of the Holy Spirit. As He speaks to our lives, what is the changes that He continues to nudge us? He says, move forward. Let go. Move forward. I want to transform you. I want to work in your life. No one puts new wine into old wineskins. If we remain as old wineskins, Jesus says clearly, it we will become useless because it will eventually burst. I'm not saying physically we're going to burst open in that sense. But we will become useless for the purpose of God. We will become useless for God to use us for His purposes. We cannot contain the new that the Lord wants to give because we still want to do things the way it has been, the way I've been taught it should be. Sometimes we hold on so much to our traditions that we go so much away from Scripture. Remember, even the religious leaders of Jesus' time did that. We are not very different from them. They held on to the traditions of man so much that they came and argued with Jesus. How come your disciples are eating without washing hands? They were so interested about hygiene and cleanliness. But Jesus was speaking about the purity of their hearts, the holiness of their hearts, the cleanliness of their hearts. But you were so dirty, so eagle, e evil in that sense that they became so externally spiritual and religious that they forgot the internal, the within. What needs to change today? What needs to change today is us. We, I, we need to change. I need to change. Each one of us must stand before God in prayer and say, Lord, I want to change. I desire to change. I want the new. We desire the new, but, but without changing. And that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. As we surrender our lives to God and say, Lord, change me. And then the Lord brings about that transformation. But again and again, the choice of remaining as we are, stubborn, adamant, 
is still there. We can choose so. Israel had the option. They chose that option. Remember, eventually they were taken into exile. They lost their freedom, everything, because of the stubbornness of their hearts. They chose to live life the, their way. Remember, they are the people of God, but living the lives as their own lifestyle. But eventually, when God's grace ran out, in that sense, He let them off to live their stubborn hearts and to receive the punishment due unto their sins because they went away and astray from the ways of God. In Romans chapter 2, verse 5, But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, stubbornness is centered deep within. It's not only external in our facial expression. It's a character that is deep within us. It's in our heart. It's an unrepentant attitude, character. Sin. You are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath when His righteous judgment will be revealed. We can remain as we are, but we will have to face, face the result of our stubbornness, result of our unrepentant heart, result as we stand before God in judgment, if not then, even now. Even now, different levels and measures of God's wrath faces us. God comes to meet us and says, I want new wineskins. Change. Be transformed. All wineskins are useless for pouring of new wine. God wants to give us the new no one pours new wine into old wine skin. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the skins are ruined. So as we think about our own lives, we may have become comfortable with old, old way, old way and pattern of doing things. But today, if you want to move with the move of God, we must be open to the new way. The new wine, the ways of God, according to Scripture again, is not going against Scripture. The ways of Scripture being led by the Spirit of God. Today, even if we sense a small little level of stubbornness and repentant heart in us, let us humble ourselves and say, God, you know me better than I know myself. Sometimes our spouses know us better than ourselves. The stubborn side of us, the adamant side of us, that I want things done my way. It should be like this. Coffee must be heated up like this only. If it's cooler, then it's bad day. If it's too hot, it's worse. So we have our own set ways of doing things. But let's be prepared to change. Change for the greater purpose of fulfilling the work of God in our lives, in our church, in our family. New wine into new wineskins. Let us pray. God our Father, we praise you and thank you that you desire to pour new wine into new wineskins. But you meet us out of your love to discipline us, to correct us, to rebuke us. Forgive us, O Lord, for being so stubborn and adamant in our own ways. We ask for your forgiveness. Teach us to hear, to see, and to learn the work of your Spirit. Help us, O Lord, to humble ourselves, not to become stubborn, unrepentant, stiff-necked, as the people of Israel were in the Old Testament. O Lord, give us the grace. Soften our hearts. Give us new mindsets, scripture-based, spirit-led mindset and lifestyle. Help us, O oh Lord, to see, to hear, to understand, to live for your glory, for your purpose. As we desire for new wine, 
We ask for your Spirit's anointing into our lives, especially for those who struggle to change, those who are not able to see this new thing that you are doing in our lives. Help them, O Lord. Give them the grace to see. Give us the grace to see. Give us the grace to see and to, Lord, change according to your purposes to fulfill your desires. We submit and surrender our lives into your gracious hand as we pray and ask all this. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.